see a lot of these players who maybe don't have, you know, the best rotation or the best loot paths and, you know, material paths available to them, not able to survive for long periods of time. You know, you get into these sticky situations where you run low on mats and it's all over. You can see Benji mats and it's all over you can see benji there in a similar position even after his pop-off right still running low on mats and then eventually being taken out you know these are the things that players are going to be thinking about right tasting somebody mm -hmm. who talked about you know having much more resources available to him than many other players and that seems to have helped out today in this specific game how does that move forward in the next sort of games is the big thing I mean, I think for Tayson in that particular situation, it's like you get that end game refresh where you need it. You've managed to get yourself tons of materials. Benji at that moment was running low, so he dropped down. And that was a perfect moment for Tayson just to take height. And with those extra materials, you know, you saw Teek scrambling for it on the low ground, right? He was looking for it. He was trying to do whatever he could on the low ground. But Tayson was chilling out. He was relaxed. He had the mats. He knew he had the HP advantage too with the chug cannon. So he played it slow, cool, calm and collected. And I went back earlier today and watched his 12 elimination victory royale from the solo FNCS, the, the big game that kind of pushed him to be first and to win that. And his reaction, you know what it was? Nothing. Didn't even say a word. You could hear his keys typing away. You could just hear him, not, not even an excitement on one of the most incredible games I've seen in FNCS history, to be honest with you. Nothing. So I'm trying to wonder, after that victory royale, what was his reaction? Well, look, the, the big thing for me, right, in sort of the final moments of that game is just going to be sort of looking at, you know, height, right? He obviously wins that game from above. And just before that, we saw Benji actually take height for a moment. You know, these final stages, who's the last person to take height? You know, you don't want to take it too early. You know, first move, if you take it, pretty useless at that stage, right? You want to try to take it as late as possible. And some of these height takes aren't even that complicated. Like when Benji took it, he just oh. looked up, realized, no one's above me, let me just have it, right? And similar thing with Tayson. So how does that sort of play out? We'll see, we'll see. Still a couple games left. Bro, and I don't know how it's happening, but Janice is always in that high ground position right there toward the end, and then he just drops it. So, and again, this is just the first two games, you know, anything could still happen. But with all that being said, we're going back into the action. Shia Wager, Sancho S, back over to you, boys. Action's too hot. There's just too much action right now, and it's all with these players who are the rising up and comers, those legends, the veterans, they're having trouble right now in the first two games, Sancho. It's just showing you the talent of all of the players in the EU region. It keeps getting deeper and deeper with every passing FNCS season and stars that are really great. We're seeing the flashes of brilliance, just like with Benji able just to have a pop off. We're seeing, you know, Thomas HD having those flashes of brilliance. But it's the new stars that are shining a little bit brighter here today. Stars like Vino, which is, like I mentioned during match one, a dark horse who has the ability to rack up E-limbs. And you're looking at it, a fifth and fourth place in this first and second match i'm expecting some big things from vino going forward yeah vino and shiz are just kind of head to head right now shiz also going down a little bit earlier in that last game so hopefully looking for that consistency at the top of the board so it's not only about getting that one game pop off but then playing well for the rest of the tournament if you're looking at all the past match histories of the solos that people winning you see a lot of just like low like early eliminations getting out early but then you see those pop-off games and that is what we're looking for who's going to have the next pop-off game who's going to be able to shine bright on the biggest stage here on fortnite in the main channel everywhere thank you so much for joining us and yo party royale Throw a, throw a tomato at that, that you know, at Shai's <laughs> face next time. Yeah, for, uh, my, my face is very tomato -able, but what's not a joke right now is the off-spawn fights we're watching in these games. Game number three, the best one to watch for you and me, except for that final one that comes in on the day. This is where we see most of the changes. This is where we see desperate people actually making their move, their chance. Snazy all the way in Caddy Corner. He's already starting off with a fight. Actually, the first shot has been ringed through the entire Fortnite Battle Royale Island. Looks like Zaiku has a few shields to pop. He's gonna break that floor. No match for him to hold. Genius here from Snazy. He's almost out of ammunition though. He has to make sure these final shots. Who knows what Zaiku has in his inventory. It's gonna go on in. Ooh, that's not a sound you wanna hear if you're Snazy. That is the sound of an SMG and that's gonna send him packing and out of this engagement here. But match three, it's about the halfway point. You're right, Shio. People make those changes. You see Vino picking up Asterios quickly in the feed. So Vino not changing the formula, sticking to it. And actually, he's adding a little bit more gas to it. Yeah, Vino currently our leader right now 
in the All-Star Solos. 53 points in total after that elimination. Snazy could have a chance to clap back right there, but unfortunately is not able to finish out that Elam and get Caddy for free. That'll affect his loot heavily. Benji, meanwhile, and then forward near the ditch. She's looking to see exactly what he can take out over here. You can see the leaderboard on the left side. It's still a very, very close game. A few eliminations, a difference in placement. Everyone's really neck and neck on show. This next game, we could have completely different names on the top of the board. Absolutely. And as you've seen, the leaderboard will get shaken up as Sefik takes up Reason out in the feed down at the aftermath here. But this is the battle that a lot of people on social media had their eyes on. Benji versus Pink. Can Benji Fishy able to be able to take out Pink and Pink using the fish sticks? A little bit of mind games that's happening between the two. So far, Benji, I think it's one to one because last time Benji went down early here. And what we see, if Benji could survive in the end game, he has the potential to take it all. Endurance is one of the biggest things inside this competition as well. You're absolutely right. It's not only surviving end games, but multiple. A lot of these youngins, they come in and they win the first few games. They kind of teeter off because that pressure, the sweat, it builds up over and over. Benji, he's used to the long form games. He's used to these drawn out 12 game tournaments, but this is just a sixer for now. Just six matches we're watching on the day. Oh, oh my goodness. Pink coming in. The shot just missed for Benji. But I've been in these kind of fights here down at the Defiant Dish, and it could take a long time. But it looks like Pink is about to end that quickly here. And now he has Benji's on the ropes with a big tag, with that green tag here. And now Benji's trying to find a middle. There's just so many ways you could kind of crouch and walk away. And the fight gets run out. Rick Sanchez enjoying the engagement here, helping <laughs> out Pink. Uh, we got an action. It's Rick Sanchez there for helping him out, dropping those bandies right there as Mappy picks up Janice. Wow, Mappy has had two games where he's taken out big names in this All-Star Showdown solo. I don't know what Mappy's doing, but we gotta watch some perspective of that as to how that fight's breaking down. It might be because he has insane loadouts and a powerful type of difference in the weapons he has in his inventory, because right now you can see it with Pink versus Benji. This tack, when you have it early, you can commit to fights with just one item completely and look so good for Benji. This great pump, he's gonna have to hit an even more than perfect shot, and it's still not gonna do a lot of damage. And then follow up with an AR, I mean, that is not the ideal situation. If you're pink in the situation, all you have to do is just roll in, shoot shots, and commit over and over. Just keep pressing left click. Benji has to be pixel perfect with his accuracy. This is a battle between 75th place and 19th place. Benji left pink in the dust on the leaderboard with that one pop-off game. Just suddenly it's a mini pop-off for Benji. Let's be real. It's a little mini pop-off. We're used to seeing him pump everybody. But now he's there, 19th place. So this is how dangerous it is for a Benji here. Cannot afford to go down because that movement off the board could happen just as way the opposite side of things. But now pink out of builds, but it still has a lot of environment to kind of pick on. And Benji now, and that's Chapix out of nowhere. Where did Chapix come from? I didn't even <laughs> see him. Chapix now is going to be the new competitor that Benji has to face. And now Benji knows who's in front of him. Phone a friend option on a very hard question for Benji to solve. But at the same time, this is not a friend. This is another enemy. He not only saw that, you know, this fight was kind of drawing out so long, but there was so many mats used, people farming over and over again. He's looking to hunt down both these players. Benji coming from that bridge south of Boney Burbs, a little bit near the aftermath, understanding that that's part of his rotational plan to get the third party in, and he picks it perfectly as Siberia Jake goes from the chop, and Peach just hits that launch pad to get away, but he may fail, fall into the embrace of Kenzel, which this is Kenzel's backyard in Coral Castle. Saw how lethal Peach is though, right, Sancho? Last game, if you give this guy just a window of opportunity, an inch to operate with an AR, he ends up doing 120 damage in like a matter of two seconds. This guy's aim is just immaculate. Knifer though, going down, one of the last survivors from game number two, I think he became and was close to the top five. Once again, we get hard stuck on 90 players alive. It's gonna be a very tricky zone to navigate no matter if you're the king of coral, no matter if you're the biggest believer on the beach. You're gonna have to overcome obstacles, go for those earth items. You to make a mistake or leave an opening in your box. Peach was coming from the All-Star Showdown play-in, coming to sixth place. Last time I made a Souls appearance in has hit this big stop sign. You know what that stop sign is called? It's no O'Reilly, all right? 
just been hitting the stop sign constantly. And someone that who had the momentum, and I thought this was someone you had to keep an eye out for, a very elite player from the French country. And it's just 